from the Institute of Global Professional IGP. Greetings from the Institute of Global Professional IGP. Thank you all for joining us and staying with us till the end. Honorable Allah Seeker, today I am your host for the evening. My name is Badun Dash. I am from Bangladesh. Dear Allah Seeker, I am proud to be associated with IGP. IGP is Social and I Study by International Educational and Training Institute. In last year, we already served 35 million plus knowledge seekers from 100 plus countries. IGP is internationally recognized and globally accredited. We are connected to more than 450 plus professions and 4,500 plus organizations. In the Institute of Global Professional is an education institute that provides social work globally recognized and reportable. We serve student and community resource providing holistic social work and education. We believe that it's not effective in case one skill just preferring formal education. So we provide effective training and consultation to generate profession generation all over the world. We distribute our services locally and nationally, internationally to students, job seekers, job holders, and also for learners, the respective campus location and distance learning platform. We are an occupational and dependable institute. IGP is one of the famous online institutes from all over the world. Our vision is education is not a business product, it's a part of our human rights. Based on our vision, we are trying to reach all corners of the world for free webinars, seminar courses, our quiz competition, mentoring, and counseling, etc. On the other side, we are also trying to offer more than 100 million services for free, like create own portfolio website, resume builder, cover letter, motivational letter, and ball knowledge platform for gathering general knowledge, which can update all day. Kids learning game, website, free course, convert sites, and many more. We help empower you to learn to meet their expectations and even become highly skilled people. We implement our training program webinar and offline online courses for you, the learner, by professional, trainer, speaker, and coaches. Our session are conducted by global leading professional to develop all kinds of youth and to promote the education of their abilities and personal speaking knowledge. It's crucial for the Institute of Global Professional. We believe that knowledge is love and life and vision. So we try to understand the needs of today's generation and we'll serve them with good research and practice method. We must have a genuine concern for the learner we present. More diversity, growth, and innovation are required to lead a session with professionalism, passion, and integrity. As a member, are committed to offering effective base quality service and continual improvement so that individuals who seek information can improve their skill level and value. Before we move to the next, let me remind you, don't forget to share, tag it. Mention your friend in the comment box. Your support is very valuable for us. Thank you. Before we move to the next, let me remind don't forget to share, tag, and mention your friend in the comment box. Your support is very valuable for us. Thank you. Moving to the next, we will continue your support. We already completed 2029 webinar successfully. Moving to the next, we will continue your support. We already completed 2029 webinar successfully. They are IGP speaker, participant, and well wisher. At this moment, this is a very important message for you all. We change and design our website www.eduigp.com. On this website, we have a surprise for everyone. Hope you will be benefited. We already launched our new website where you can find a lot of previous activities together with lots of new features. But one strong point is that without an account of login, you cannot enjoy our service. So, create your account for us with profile information. Note that with profile information, you'll enjoy our feature with mismatch that you cannot do anything here. From now on, you have to participate in live quiz competition on our website. We replace that, you have to join directly on our website. Now you can check all of our previous webinars with verified e-certificate. Now it's easier and time limited because after the session, we will not provide you any code for certification. You have to take part in one exam for that. If you pass, you will receive your certificate, otherwise not. But you can take part in an exam unlimited till you pass. If you're an IGP speaker, you can download all your previous certificate, speakership certificate. If you're a host of IGP, you can download a certificate of gratitude. If you're an online life quiz competition winner, you can download a certificate of participation. If you're selected for a lifetime membership, then you can download a certificate of lifetime membership easily. Beside this, if you participate in an award function which organizes common support with IGP, you can download that also. You can easily prepare and download 18 types of Indian certificates from our website within a minute. Certificate of Global Professional Membership, Certificate of Global Influences in the Pandemic, Certificate of Active Knowledge, Certificate of Social Activities in the Pandemic, Certificate of IGP and IGP Knowledge in Gambit 2020, 2021 and 2022, Certificate of Participation Webinar Series 1, Authentic Assessment in Teaching Learning, Certificate of Participation Webinar Series 2, Teaching English or Foreign Language and Assessment. Certificate of Participation Webinar Series 3, Digital Classroom Engagement Tool, Certificate of Participation Webinar Series 4, The New Trend in Education, Certificate of Participation Webinar Series 5, Up Skill Financial Leadership and Management Skills, Certificate of Participation Webinar Series 6, Trend and Innovation in Mathematics Education, Certificate of Participation Webinar Series 7, Research and Conferential Approach, Certificate of Participation Webinar Series 8, Art and Teaching, a Special Program in the Art, Certificate of Participation Webinar Series 9, 21st Century Tooling Teaching Mathematics, Certificate of IGP Corporate Ambassador, Certificate of IGP Campus Ambassador, which you can prepare and download within a minute. From now on, you can participate in 1000 plus international level quiz with verified certificate. 
teaching tips for teacher health tips for parents health tips for teens education tools for teacher you can join igp alumni you can check out our free student services website for free and many more we are igp well wisher we promise previously but lack of technical problem we are late sending you on time this is a great opportunity to collect your previous connection to solve all issues from our website now you can enroll is a password everything you can check your details for all of your details it's a program request to check all button and pages on our website you like and fill many details Thank you, but note that without an account or login, you cannot enjoy our service. At present, we are going to share a 2030 webinar whose name is Teaching Tolerance and Overcoming Discrimination. And today, our speaker's name is Arnola Brian Yu. Marcado, he is from Philippines. Before I hand over this to our speaker, sir, I'll share a very little bit about him. Teacher 3, Antipolo City Senior High School, Microsoft Innovative Educator Science and Social Science Coach. Now, very important moment for me to invite our speaker to IGP with his presentation. Now, very important moment for me to invite our speaker to IGP with his presentation. Hello, sir. Good evening. Hello, ma'am. Good evening. And hello, everyone, to our watchers, viewers, and participants. So, the stage is here. You can start your presentation now. All right. Thank you so much. All right, everyone. Hello, IGP. Hello. Hello, feed your skills, feed your learning, and welcome also to this session, Diversity in the Classroom Teaching, Tolerance and Overcoming Discrimination. All right, so let's start what we are waiting for. So we all know that in classroom, we explore key challenges and strategies related to addressing diversity in the school environment and, of course, promoting the tolerance. As educators and teachers and education staff, we always aim for our students to become successful. And of course, to have the right knowledge, skills, and attitudes to find their best place in the society we live in. Our modern society is extremely diversified as well as the multicultural, as such promoting diversity and the tolerance in the classroom has become a crucial goal for all teachers, school and the adult education. Building the empathetic and the open-minded characters welcoming for diversity can make a real impact for the learners and for the whole society participating in this session of course my dear participants for all teachers for all professionals for all educational staff will share and discuss some challenges i will also give some best practices and strategies about promoting the tolerance and acknowledging and celebrating diversity inside the classroom. All right, so let's continue. Our objectives are the following, which are flash on your screen. Let me read. First is to get familiar with the key challenges and concerns in acknowledging and promoting the diversity. Of course, share, discuss concrete examples, ideas, and tools to inspire and support the teachers in their lesson planning in terms of diversity and tolerance. Another is learn how to confront and hold the different kinds of stereotypes and personal prejudice while developing cultural sensibilities and the tolerance. Explore different points of view through the participation of simulation exercises and storytelling and learn new teaching methods and tools that can be applied to promote diversity and tolerance inside the classroom. All right, so let's start. Let's talk first what is diversity of learners. We all know that our learners are all different. And being different is common for us as teachers inside the classroom. And with this, teachers need to integrate various educational ideas, perspectives, and theories in planning the instruction for all types of students. The classroom are becoming more complex today and diverse. That's according to SHIM 2011. And what's up now? It's more complex rather than before. Teachers, therefore, play a significant role in helping the students become cosmopolitan members of the society. And the factors that bring about the student diversity are the following. First is the socioeconomic status, of course. Another is the th thinking or the learning styles, such as the multiple intelligences and some parts of the brains or the hemispheres of the learners. And of course, number three is the exceptionalities. For teachers, we all know that as teachers, we have the cognitive, affective, and the psychomotor development of learners. We, according to psychology, we provide the studies, the theories, and the principles about the development and nature of every learner. 
and therefore leading to the influence of diversity factors on education. It is also important for the teacher to instill a global perspective among the students or learners, exposing them to the histories, languages, religious traditions, cultures of countries and different places. The students should respond to the different diverse diverse culture societies and diverse individuals. They have different interests and issues too. Therefore, we should also consider their learning styles and thinking preferences of our learner. We should check also the Howard Gardner's Multiple Intelligence Theory, which is one of the famous and the common theory in terms of in the field of education. And of course, we need to know the benefits of diversity in the classroom. First, we have the student's self-awareness is enhanced by diversity. Remember, my dear participants and viewers, exposing the students to others with diverse backgrounds and experiences also serves to help students focus on their awareness of themselves. Another benefit can be student diversity contributes to cognitive development. The opportunity to gain access to the perspectives of peers and to learn from other students rather than the rather than the teacher or instructor only may be especially important for promoting the learner's cognitive development so therefore my dear participants we should consider also the opportunities that we will give to our learners number three benefit can be student diversity prepares learners for their role as responsible members of our society and lastly student diversity can promote harmony when the student's diversity is integrated into the different classroom teaching into different learning process it can become a vehicle for them in promoting harmonious race relationships classroom strategies for student diversity are the following let me give some best practices from our country here in the philippines and maybe this these techniques are also you have been practicing this in your in your culture in your in your country so let me know you can make a chat everyone so first is encourage the learners to share their personal history and experiences we should know their background first another number two integrate learning experiences and activities which promote students multicultural and cross-cultural awareness number three aside from highlighting the diversity identify also the patterns of unity that transcend group differences we should know their commonalities that's one of the best techniques number four communicate high expectations to students from all subgroups another we also have used varied instructional methods to accommodate student diversity in their learning styles. Another varied examples to use to illustrate concepts in order to provide multiple contexts that are relevant to students from diverse backgrounds. Another one, adapt to students' diverse backgrounds and learning styles by allowing them personal choice and decision-making opportunities concerning what they will learn what they have on how they will learn it another one is this diversify the methods that we use as teachers of course as a teacher we need to diversify it or different methods different strategies different techniques and of course in terms of assessing and evaluating our students learners our student learning all right let's continue now, let's talk about the diversity inside the classroom. There's an excess of an inequality of the educational opportunities provided to children who live in within the city, within the provinces, rural or urban areas, modern or traditional. Many teachers who are raised in suburban communities are not properly cultivated to work in urban schools with children of color. So we as educators must be able to provide the quality education needed to prepare our students for the future. Remember, my dear participants and viewers, when we fail, the students become victims 
and are ill-suited to compete in a global society. Let's continue. All right. A teacher must prepare themselves to receive whatever may enter his or her classroom in the form of a child, unless one is willing to concede. And remember that in today's society, racism and prejudice still exist in the hearts and minds of many teachers. Therefore, there are some judgments concerning the poverty, the ghetto culture, the color of the people. So those are the factors that can be serve as barrier for this diversity. The lack of knowledge concerning the students who live in urban communities also play a con contributing factor in the inequality of education provided to them. There are several unacceptable beliefs as to why the juncture of those circumstances differs from the opportunities afforded to middle and upper class society. Another, we should consider the culturally relevant relevance. The, having knowledge of these students' circumstances is really needed, but should not be used as an excuse to disregard the pedagogy connected with learning that core subject skills needed to, su to succeed academically. The assumption which leads teachers to believe that an unsymmetrical relationship exists between urban children and society. This type of teachers feel that his or her purpose has become preparing the students to fight injustice by actually being highly qualified and captiously vigilant. Students who are in the classroom with this type of teacher will sit in the class every day and just viewing as a child who will exist in a continual battle of hardships. All right, let's continue. Another is the school dependent. Having knowledge of the student's circumstances is needed. Remember, describing the students who are thriving in school notwithstanding the lack of funds is also a concern to provide resources to fully educate a student. Students who are school dependent will most certainly fail in a school where there are lack of funds and resources if it were not for an excellent teacher. And this is students look for their education as their only way for the only way out in this proper poverty and despair. Okay, let's continue. According to William Sloan Coffin Jr., diversity may be the hardest thing for a society to live with and perhaps the most dangerous thing for a society to live without. So see, my dear participants, it's really important to consider the diversity of our learners. So let's continue with this. The prejudice, meaning to endure or damage by some judgment or action. When we see a child, it's not a child, all right? Not our child, okay? When we see the color, not the child. When we see the behavior, not the need. When we see the lack of knowledge, not the desire to learn. When we see the culture, not the intestinal fortitude. There's a classicism idea wherein when we look at where they come from and not where they are going. When we look at where the student lives, not what he or she had to endure while attempting to get to school. When we look at what their parents do for a living, rather than are they still alive in prison or addicted to drugs. The parents may have a job but are still considered poverty stricken. So now, let me present some discussions and, of course, some scenarios. Here's, some, here's a sample. Discussion. How would you respond if ever, my dear viewers and participants? You can also help us in this scenario. Scenario one, let me read. Students inform the teacher of situation at home. Father was just arrested and mom was getting high all night. Student is sleepy from watching siblings and preparing them for school as well as herself. Students inform, inform you she has been sexually assaulted, being jumped, or initiated into a gang. Students inform your mom had a drug party last night and was afraid to go to sleep, afraid someone may come in and hurt her. So this is one of the scenarios that where the students experience a lot of judgment and of course the tolerance in in their home of course we all know that learning starts at home 
So, for a learner that cannot start or prepare his self or herself inside the home, and when he or she tried to go out and attempted to go to school, there are some factors that may affect him or her in terms of diversity and, of course, the judgment around him or her. Now, let me give some strategies that are used by different schools in the community as well. So these are, of course, some teachers often believe that students who are not doing well in school are hindered because he or she does not have someone at home who care about their performance in the school. Of course, we all know that learners with a poor performance has a bad or not good experience at home. This is a sad misconception about most parents of the children who live in urban communities is that they are all ignorant and unlearned. Another false perception is that these parents, because they are unlearned or uneducated, is that they do not value education. There are many parents who desire to be involved but are not able. Many parents also work crazy hours. Some may not have the resources to aid in some assignments sent home for our child. Now, this teaching strategies for effective teaching and learning, as an educator, we should ask ourselves, as a teacher, as a professional, when a parent does show an interest in their child's education, are they warmly greeted? When parents request to volunteer in the classroom, are they welcome in? When homework assignments are sent home, is the teacher willing to explain to the parent as well as the student what needs to be done and how to do it? We often, we always complain about parents that being more involved in their child, in their child's education. But, my dear participants and viewers, but they are not treated congenial upon entering the school building. Of course, we need the support of our parents. Parents' communication, communication between parents and teachers should be two-way. A receiver, communicator. Frequent, it should be frequent and meaningful. Communication should also invite parents to share ideas, help from school goals, and clarify the institutional expectations. When communication is frequent and high quality, the parents' evaluation of their child's teacher level of comfort with their child's school and involvement in school-based activities are all substantially higher. Another we should consider in, par in parental support strategies is support for parenting. Decisions, par decisions from parents make about, example, diet, entertainment, healthcare, and discipline correlate with different outcomes in terms of learners, students' learning. Many schools provide parents education and support the programs to help parents build more effective, developmentally appropriate parenting skills. Another one, we should also consider the engage, engaging them or the parents in student learning. When parents help their, when they help their child or they teach their child, the parents not only improve the child's skills, but also they also increase their own feelings of competence, which in turn, teachers send home strategies and suggestions of ways the parents could support the learning. Parents often respond favorably. In general, the more schools engage parents in specific student learning tasks, the more likely students' achievement is to improve. This includes parents' involvement in homework tasks, as well as helping the students adopt regular study homework and different routines. All right. Also, we should consider the following. Involving the parents in volunteering, engaging the parents and caregivers in school for services volunteer opportunities is usually one of the first ways that the parents and, of course, school personnel envision parent involvement. In reality, my dear viewers and participants, the parent volunteering is one of the kind of parent involvement that demonstrates little impact on student learning. But 
volunteering can be an important way to build the linkages or the connection between the parents and the schools that lead to more family engagement overall. Another, involving the parents in making decisions. Like volunteering, parents and caregivers' involvement in school decision-making impacts the student's achievement in a big way because it builds relationships between the parents, the schools that encourage the adults to become involved in student learning. For example, when, a stu when student achievement in districts or schools that involve parents in decision-making to adopt a new reading program, for example, is compared to students' achievement in school that did not involve the parents. Therefore, the school that involved parents and, of course, the teachers in decisions about implementing the program and strategies for reinforcing the program at home had significantly higher reading scores. So that's one of the best evidences or support that we can give to our learners or to our students or our child. All right, let's continue. Now, the qualified teacher is also important. There are many studies that connect teacher qualifications to student academic achievement. The quality of teacher is really important because it gives a strong impact on the quality of education provided to our learners. Qualified teachers in the classroom are one of the most important factors in a classroom when addressing the student achievement. A teacher should, number one, remember this, building strong relationships between the students and the teachers. Children can sense when an adult is being genuine with them. Knowledgeable teachers who are well prepared to present a lesson to a student who have literally no emotional or personal relationship with their students will never break through with a child who has been let down by every adult in his or her life. Up the sea to the level of the spectator on a hillside. A qualified teacher should high expectations. You, as a teacher, must first believe the student can succeed. All classrooms are filled with diversity. And it's important to know that there are no two people, no two people or students who learn exactly the same. Therefore, we should recognize the differences of our learners, the, their personal beliefs, and the student should lead a good teacher to know more about the culture of the groups he or she is teaching and have high expectations for every student regardless of the color or the place or the station in life. Another one, handling diversity in the classroom. There's an excess inequality of the educational opportunities provided to children who live within the inner city. Many teachers who are raised in suburban communities are not properly cultivated to work in urban schools with children of color. We, as educators, must be able to provide the quality education needed to prepare our students. What is diversity and why we should care? Of course, number one, broad, broadly speaking, diversity refers to a state in which there are many different forms present. In a classroom setting, diversity can present itself in a number of different ways. It can be multicultural students, different learning styles, or it can be distinct personalities. You make sure that each student feels like they belong in the classroom. It's really essential in order to maximize the effectiveness of the learning process. Okay, we will especially focus on, of course, diversity in learning style. Remember LS, learning style. Another, the CB, diversity in cultural background. And the KB, knowledge background. So those are the things that a teacher should consider inside the classroom. The learning styles, cultural background, the knowledge background. All right. There are three main ways our students are learning best. First, mostly our today's learner are all visual learners. They need to see things to truly grasp them. So as a teacher, as an educator, 
when we are making our instructional materials or what we call IMs, we should always consider the presentation of pictures, the visual graphics, which can help our learners to identify and to learn what's the concept behind our discussion. Another, many of our learners are auditory learners. They like to hear information, matches traditional classrooms, of course. So therefore, as a teacher, we should keep in our minds that we teachers should also prepare ourselves in giving our teacher's side, our teacher's concept, our teacher's explanation for them, for our learners to know what's the main topic or the subject or the discussion all about. Another type of our learners are the following, the kinesthetic learners. They learn best while they are moving or touching a stimulus or learning related to the lesson. Remember, these are factors like time of the lecture. That's one example. The differences influencing the learning style and pace of learning of the students. Guiding principle number one, of course, remember, diversify your teaching methods. Of course, as a teacher, as an educator, we should consider everyday teaching. And everyday teaching is just like a food. Have you tried to eat a food which is always the same every day? So if you tried it, it's really, it's really annoying. Therefore, as a teacher, we should also consider the different teaching methods that we will prepare every day by incorporating different teaching methods to accommodate different ways of learning. Not only do you ensure that each student is learning the material effectively, you also broaden students' abilities. All right. One practical example is the plan, plan, and plan. This is one of the best methods. Of course, we should pre-assess our students' readiness or learning profile. Know the content, what we teach. Know the process, how we teach it. And of course, know the product, how the students demonstrate understanding or the skill. These changes can be based on ongoing assessment. If needed, as a teacher, of course, we need to adjust. Guiding principle number two, be clear and structured. Students with different capabilities may have different le learning paced. To be sure that everyone has understood the main concepts, you need to give a clear structure to the learning materials as much as you can. One example of this is communicate clearly with students. Is use simple, clear language when communicating with the students. Make an eye contact with the student before giving new concepts. Speak in a clear voice that all students can hear you easily. Be sure that all students can see the board or the projection screen without difficulty. Also, you might also consider our learners with visual difficulties. Another practical example that I can share is the break down the whole to pieces or chunking method, learning chunks. All right, preview the schedule with students and highlight academic and behavioral expectations for each activity. You keep your instructions briefly. You break the steps into smaller parts or smaller subsets and have the students complete one subset, one subject, subset, one task at a time, then advance to another. You write also the assignments or complex concepts on the board while you are teaching. And when you hear their, their answers, you always write that on board. Even though some of their answers are wrong or correct, you still write their answers in addition to saying them. Of course, we should also consider the cultural diversity. Cultural diversity in the classroom, there are many different cultures that you will encounter in the classroom and how these cultural differences must be handled by us, by teachers, by the different professionals. In connection with guiding principle number two, be multicultural also in your course materials or subject materials. You, when you teach, you are sensitive in your learners, but not only in your learners, but also 
to the different instructional materials or course materials that you will be used. Choose culturally relevant curriculum and instructional materials. You also consider the student's self-esteem should be strengthened when they see or read about the contributions made by their own racial or ethnic groups. Students also come to realize that the teachers value and appreciate each child's culture and, of course, their language. Okay, one of the best practical examples is diversity in choosing the cases or example. In a case study and group works, students can also choose the cases for their countries, or you can provide a list of possible cases from different regions. Let them immerse. Let them be involved. Let them know. Let them explore what's the culture that they have and share it to other learners. Also, in giving examples, you can have different examples from different regions, or countries, not necessarily, for example, this nation. Let them explore. Let them do the research. Let them have a connection. Let them celebrate their own culture. Let them mitigate and build their confidence, their self-esteem in sharing their culture with others. With this, because of diversity, we, we are promoting inclusion with our learners. We provide equity. We let them lead and provide, and we are providing the leadership with a purpose. Another guiding principle is identify and dispel the stereotypes. There are many researchers found that awareness of the negative stereotype, for example, the black students, the black college students, or the Latino students, are less intelligent than white and Asian students can actually negatively affect the performance levels in black and Latino students. Therefore, my dear participants, teachers, viewers, do not promote stereotyping. Studies involving people of all ages who are subject to a range of different stereotypes, like, like for example, the race, ethnicity, gender, and the age, have consistently shown the power of stereotypes to negatively impact all kinds of performance depending on the stereotype. Avoid, avoid clustering them, all right? Do not let them cluster to each other, all the whites here, all the blacks here. That is wrong strategy in, in us as teachers. The, the learners will feel discrimination. As a practice, we need to be aware of racial or sexist stereotypes and avoid them, such as the use of man for human, or the use of pronoun he or she in referring to both men and women. Using some terms like third world countries, that's one another, this form of stereotyping. Latino, black, those are some examples of stereotyping. And of course, we should also consider or avoid the uh, stereotyping in our teaching materials. Example, it may harm the sense of inclusiveness in our class. Another one is the disciplinary diversity. There is also a trend for multi- and interdisciplinary course design, building on the different perspectives and ideas where the students bring with them from other subjects. Also, there are some courses, for example, in college or higher education for different programs in the university. Disciplinary diversity refers to teaching students from diverse disciplinary backgrounds. For example, teaching a subject for non-majors or non-to-specialists. Law for business students, ethics for medical students, or chemistry for engineering students. Another guiding principle is encourage differing perspectives in the class. This practice also teach, teaches the teachers or the students the invaluable lesson that there is often no one correct way to do the things. If the students are encouraged to contribute different solutions to a problem, not only will participation increase in the whole class, but also the students will also feel as if their input is really valuable. Then they will be, they, they will be encouraged to challenge themselves to come up with some solutions. One practical example here is the again vain and plan carefully. Of course, um, also in the class, there's examples and promote discussions 
to look at the problems from different perspectives and discuss from other disciplines. You try also as a teacher to explicitly ask the students what background to reflect on the problem. For example, if you are discussing the design of a new product, ask law students to reflect on a regulatory issues or food technology students to discuss the technical challenges. Another practical example is include other people in teaching. Search out for the people that are different from yourself to share certain ideas with your students. Especially look for some experts who themselves cross different disciplines in their studies or career development. Another practical example that I can give and share to all of you is use cooperative learning strategies. This, this is one of my favorite using the cooperative learning strategies. It is preferred to give a good weight to group works or joint assignments, as well as peer feedbacks in the design and evaluation of assignments for some subjects or courses with high disciplinary diversity. You can also make it more explicit if possible. For instance, in a supply chain management subject, you can specially ask the students in their case assignment to address the marketing aspects and technical aspects of the chain design in a group assignment. With this purpose, we need to distribute the students from different backgrounds equally in different teams. All right. So these are the principles in one snapshot. The for example, the type of diversity, we have three, diversity in learning styles. And what's the guiding principle? Diversity in learning styles, the guiding principle are the following incorporate multiple forms of assessment, be clear and structured, diversify your teaching methods. In terms of diversity in culture or cultural diversity, identify and dispel the stereotypes, be multicultural in your course materials or teaching materials or instruction materials. Another diversity that we should consider is the knowledge background. Use cooperative learning strategies and of course, encourage different perspectives from your students inside your class. With all of these types of diversity, my dear viewers and participants, the common endpoint is understand and celebrate diversity. As a teacher, we always understand our learners, identify their culture, the diversity happening inside the classroom, and celebrate all together, together with the learners, with the parents, with the educational staff, because diversity should be considered, should be always considered as part of the important ingredients to give a quality education. Now let's have teaching tolerance. Remember, my dear educators, teaching tolerance play a crucial role in helping the students especially in their historical roots and contemporary manifestation of social inequality and discrimination. Learning how to communicate about such topics such as white privilege, police violence, economic inequality, and mass incarceration requires the practice. And facilitating difficult conversations demands courage and skill, regardless of who we are, our intention, or how long we have been teaching. Always remember, Prepare yourself. We always prepare yourself as a teacher. Assess your comfort level. Part of getting students ready to talk about their race and racism is to first deal with our own fears. Find the comfort in discomfort. Be vulnerable and consider the technology that you have. Consider the following statements and select, select the one that best describes how you feel. Example, I would rather not talk about race or racism. Another, I am very uncomfortable talking about race or racism. Another, I am usually uncomfortable talking about race or racism. Another one, I am sometimes uncomfortable talking about racism. Another, I usually comfortable thinking about racism. Last one, I am very comfortable talking about racism. Then you can use a sentence or STEM activity to self-reflect. The hard part of talking about racism is another. The beneficial part of talking about racism is 
with this way, we can hear the side of our learners. And of course, we can penetrate inside their minds, their histories. We can check their histories. We can have a simple background check of our learners. In preparing yourself, always remember, find comfort in discomfort. Be being uncomfortable should not, me should not mean being unsafe if it can be avoided. As a class, establish classroom norms that include a list of specific words and phrases that students commit to not using. The list might include calling people. For example, the word stupid should be eliminated or lame. That's so gay or using the N word or the R words. Students can create and sign a contract or agreement of norms and behaviors and define the classroom community as a socially and emotionally safe place. Just always remember, my dear viewers, that classroom is like a big place or society. Therefore, let us train our learners, our students, to be responsible and practice respect. Try to understand what someone is saying before rushing to judgment. All right. If the conversation becomes very personal, you may want to establish structures for allowing the students to share the experiences and interrupt them without response from other students. All right. Assess your comfort level. Of course, be vulnerable. Avoiding conversations about race and racism can arise from your own fears of being vulnerable. So therefore, as you prepare to engage stu students in difficult conversations, you always consider these important questions that you can see on our screen. Considering the race or racism, or it potentially exposed about me. Of course, you need to know the strengths and the needs. You address the strong emotions. Seeing members of the class respond emotionally may elicit reactions from you or other students can be guilt or shame, can lead to crying that may immobilize the conversation. Anger might lead to interruptions, loud talking, sarcasm, or explicit confrontations, all of which can impede important dialogue. As a teacher, your role is to remain calm and assess the situation. If the tension in the room appears to be prompting dialogue and learning, continue to monitor. Don't stop to monitor. But let the conversation play out. If the tensions boils over the confrontation, therefore, you take steps to diffuse the situation. All right. Another, plan for your students. And how to plan? Of course, there are many ways. Let me share it later. But remember, as a teacher, you should be equipped with some strategies that can be used to persevere during difficulty conversations. Here are some of the pedagogical approaches to help students learn to sit with their discomfort and to moderate it over time. First, strategy number one that I can share. Reiterate, contemplate, respire, and communicate. These steps as a way to communicate while feeling difficult emotions. This step won't prevent or change the emotions students may feel, but they can see themselves to be regulated. Step one, reiterate. Restate what you heard. This step enables the students to reflect on what they have heard as opposed to what they think they may have heard. Repeating what they have heard limits miscommunication and, of course, the misinformation. Step two, contemplate. You count, count to 10 before responding. Students can think about their responses and use the time to compose what they want to say. Taking time to think about their responses help, them, help the, our students move away from immediate emotional responses that can potentially derail the conversation. Step three, respire. Take a, take a deep breath to check in with yourself. Suggesting the students to take a few breaths also before responding may help them settle their thoughts and emotions during difficult conversations. Step four, communicate. Speak with compassion and thoughtfulness. Students should do their best to speak as they want to be spoken to, assuming good intentions and seeking understanding. Explain to them what they disagree with something 
someone has said. They should focus on challenging the statement rather than the person who said it. All right. Another strategy that I can share to all of you is what we call check in with the students. Another is fist of five. Staying on some of the emotional temperature in the classroom and checking with the students about how they're feeling helps. It helps you know when to stop and address strong emotions. Checking in non-verbally to gauge the students' comfort levels allow all the students to participate without being singled out or put on the spot. Example, when we use this, our face, it means I am very uncomfortable and cannot move on. When we use one finger, I am uncomfortable and need someone help before I can move. When we use two fingers, I am a little uncomfortable, but I want to try to move on. When we use three fingers, I am not sure how, how I am feeling. When we use four fingers, I am comfortable enough to move on. When we use high five or five fingers, I am ready to move on full steam ahead. All right. So we can also use another strategy with this stoplight, one of the best. And this method, you are using different colors of the traffic light to signal the student's readiness and comfort. Throughout the discussion, you can ask the students if they are green, yellow, or red. Students can also use the red light to request a break or stop when they are feeling strong emotions or have been uncomfortably triggered. When they use green, meaning they are ready to go. When they use yellow, I can go but I feel hesit hesitant about moving forward. When they, when they show red, I do not want to go on right now. All right. Strategy three that I can share is allow time and space to debrief. All right. Talking circles. This is one of the best. Gather them in a circle and create and then review the norms that will help build trust within each other. Select a significant objective as a talking piece that allow participants to engage equally in the discussion. Everyone engaged in an emotional charged conversation needs to allow for the safe discharge of emotions before leaving the classroom. Provide them the opportunity to debrief what they are learning and their experience of learning it, depending on your group. You may want to devote a portion of each lesson, half a class period or an entire class to debrief and reflect. All right. Now, so those are sample strategies that I may share to all of you. So hopefully those are very helpful and can be used by our dear viewers and participants together with us now. Now, let me give the 10 ways where the teacher can fight racism and teach tolerance. Remember, the pain of racism is devastating in different countries and you've likely seen the impact in your community also. You might have seen, even, even seen it in your classroom. Now, we see demonstrations stalking places with different people to the streets to stand out against injustice. Our stomachs churn, our heart break, and our minds wonder, what can we do to make this a better world for everyone. Now, let me share my 10 ways for our teachers or educators that can fight racism and teach tolerance right now. 10 ways. These are, number one, get and stay informed. Sometimes we think we know more than we actually do. When it comes to racism, you cannot neglect the importance of being informed. You read books, watch movies, in just beginning of the genre. Then racism is such a deeply ingrained part of our society that may not, we may not even recognize it. For example, many schools have dress codes that contain exclusionary policies, particularly when it comes to their hairstyles. So therefore, we should also consider that. Families are all too often punished for refusing to conform and educators need to make every effort to stop this destructive pattern from continuing. So Teaching Tolerance offers professional development workshops also. You might also try to be involved with some workshops, self-directed learnings, webinars like this for, uh, provided by the Institute of Global Professionals. 
since you are here, you are now learning how to fight racism and, of course, teach the tolerance. Number two, speak up. One of the most painful things we can experience is people being silent around us while we are suffering. No matter the circumference, it's never okay to look the other way when we see others being mistreated or abused. We must always confront and address racism in all forms every single time. Once you become more aware of the injustices for your students, their families, and your colleagues, their color, the face, every day, you absolutely must speak up whenever you witness racism in action. Another, give your classroom a diversity audit. It's natural to gravitate the, to familiar concepts, which is why it's so important that we push ourselves to look through multiple lenses when we're preparing our classrooms. More than ever, our students deserve to feel included, loved, and celebrated for who they are. They need to know that we recognize and support them. All right. Another, commit to listening. One of the ways teachers can foster cultural awareness in their classroom is to express interest in the ethnic backgrounds of students. Additionally, recognize that active listening involves more than simply hearing your students, especially during difficult moments. Listening to truly understand is crucial and will impact how you respond when students report acts of bullying or racism in the community, the school, and your classroom. Remember, the classroom culture you create should focus on giving every student a voice while honoring students' experiences and providing social and emotional safety. Another, bring empathy into your classroom. Teaching with empathy is incredibly important, especially if you are trying to teach tolerance in your classroom. Empathy is the action of misunderstanding. I'm, I'm sorry, the action of understanding, being aware of, being sensitive to, and experiencing that feelings, thoughts, and experience of another. Without having the feelings, thoughts, and experience fully communicated in an objectively explicit manner. All right. Another... Here is the 6 to 10 uh, ways. Enhance your curriculum. While we touch on this moment, of course, this topic really deserves attention. Be conscious and aware of the fact that learning materials, assessment tools, and his historical accounts can be biased. A good place to begin is by reading, example, the um, one of the important websites, The Racist Beginnings of Standardized Testing on the National Education Association's website. As such, one of the most important ways to fight racism is to teach tolerance in our classroom, is to rethink and enhance the curriculum. We should always look for the ways to give our students the fairest and the most balanced experiences possible, especially during these formative years in their lives. Another, Set high expectations and lead by example. Once you lay the foundation for your diverse classroom, make it clear that you have high expectations for your students, parents, and school. You manage your intolerance, discrimination, and out outright racism in your classroom might require a lot of effort. But just imagine how exhausting it is to be a person of color. Challenge any policies, punishments, or practices that take away from the mission of creating an inclusive environment. Another one is, number eight, learn from other teachers. If you've been in the classroom for any length of time, you already know your fellow teachers are also wealth of information. Undoubtedly, you've sought to find the best tips for your workbooks and room decors. There are some many incredible teachers of color out of, out of there creating content for this very reason. Whether it's tackling a difficult situation in the classroom or learning to recognize oppressive policies. Remember, my dear viewers, participants, that if you see a way, if you see ways to find excellent way to stay engaged, be engaged. And another, get involved. It's number nine. When we disconnected from something, it's much easier to dismiss it. You might scroll right by a story that has no impact on your life 
while tears up people of color in your community. That's one of the reasons why racism continues to be so pervasive. Some people don't even recognize it. Again, do not miss opportunities to get involved. You might start a diversity com committee at your school, examine and analyze school policies that may harm or marginalize your students. You can also request ongoing sensitivity training for, for the administrators and the teachers. Support justice reform. And of course, pay attention to what important equality another one is of course donate year after year there are so many protests erupt across different countries as human beings fight for their constitutional rights to live this shouldn't be necessary now we know that teachers are incredibly underpaid which is why a donation is such a meaningful gesture to all thousands of people have been arrested fighting injustice an immediate and impactful way to show your support is of course Donate, help, donate, support. All right. Teaching tolerance, how educators help inclusive classrooms in 2023 and 2024. Of course, these are some summary of the ways how educators help build inclusive, inclusive classrooms last year. Now, I will, I will share this to all of you, my dear viewers and participants. Students learn more than just letters and numbers in schools. Many diverse interactions are made in the school environment, significantly impacting the lives of the students and society. The children's interaction at school set a foundation for their social and emotional development, therefore influencing their future interactions. So again, teaching tolerance, remember this. Teaching tolerance, the program helps educators build equitable societies by providing educational resources, and advancing instru instructional content that promotes diversity and inclusiveness. So why tolerance matters in the classroom? Tolerance promotes social equality in schools. A tolerant learning environment helps students learn how to interact with people who are different. And it also prevents the spread of distasteful attitudes and behaviors such as bias, exclusions, while teaching tolerance is really crucial, teachers, educators still need support in incorporating tolerance in their instruction and incorporating that into their topics. Let's look how you can incorporate tolerance in your classroom instruction. Simply by, of course, choose inclusive learning materials. You should be mindful of the teaching resources that you will purchase or you will be used. Another, using primary teaching resources. Primary sources are significant in teaching students about the history while embracing cultural sensitivity. In addition, there are some ebooks or electronic versions of primary sources that can help students connect to renowned social justice activists. Example, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. They, you can use the author or the advocate of social justice for your lessons. All right. Next, we have creating safe space. Understanding what safe, space, safe, safe space looks like for each student is really essential. You can also encourage your class to work together to create a plan that supports each student to realize their safe space. Creating so, safe spaces is a significant way of realizing social awareness and empathy which attribute to tolerance another use history lessons to teach historical injustice educators teachers can use history lessons to educate students about instances of racism for instance you can use lesson plan resources to guide students to address issues of racism and stereotyping by encouraging a brave space for conversations in classrooms Teachers can use history lessons to help students to understand societal injustices. Strategies for inclusive classrooms. Number one is to understand the diversity in your class. As always, have a diverse life as an educator. You need to get out of your comfort zone and evaluate your teaching materials. Another, improve your curriculum. You can design assignments, 
lessons to help the students celebrate their identities and learn about their culture. Another one, media should use inclusive, inclusive media when teaching. Using an inclusive and responsive approach to, to diversify helps students see their identities represented. Example, they will feel included when they are being represented. And of course, uh, let them, like for example, inclusive media can be basic as drawings on their classroom walls, videos, and diverse storybooks. It helps the students feel safer and less lonely. Another one, celebrate special days. Highlighting specific culture holidays can help shed the light on tolerance. It can be like, for example, cultural fair, religious holiday, or traditional day. You can always acknowledge their special talents and accomplishments of the people being celebrated and incorporated their information in your lesson plans. You can also make it about the, their cultures, food, dances, music, or certain individual icons. Another one, let students teach about their culture. Teachers can encourage their students to show their diversity by teaching their culture. You can express interest in the students' ethnic backgrounds. You can also encourage the learners to make a research about their culture and the other cultures and share that information to their class. You always foster a classroom culture that celebrates um, traditional differences, beliefs, and social behaviors. This will help develop a trusting relationship among classmates. Now, we all want students to become global citizens who can successfully engage with an increasingly diverse world. But how do we facilitate interactions and learning experiences that foster acceptance and understanding of people and culture? How can we inspire them to work for social justice and actively counter bullying, stereotypes, and racism? Now, let me present to you some nine tips. These are nine for teaching diversity skills defined as the ability to learn about differences, talk about them, accept them, and peacefully resolve them. So, these are the ways of combating racism in a multicultural world, classroom ideas. First is bring learning to life. Always remember that. Another, expose the students to a variety of people and environments. Breaking down the barriers and involving them to be part of the environment is really an effective way to combat racism. Another one, let students pursue their interests. Children are all natural explorers. Encourage them to study a culture that they find intriguing or interesting. You can also use the KWL charts or different charts that can help them build their interests with some cultures of their own or others. Ensure that cultural learning goes beyond parties. All right. Include their holidays, their food, but make sure to dig deeper to help kids understand the day-to-day -day experiences of diverse members of a particular culture. Use books to explore through topics. Don't be afraid to read books that explore challenging themes such as bullying, acculturation, assimilation, and racism. If the school library doesn't have titles of interest on the shelf, help kids to find ways to, um, to get some reference materials about racism for, or for, them, for them to know what kind of culture and how to fight racism. And of course, defend their own culture. Help kids, another, help kids get below the surface with those from other cultures. Another, uh, of course, letting students practice asking questions will increase their comfort level. Help them avoid preconceived notions about groups of people and give them the means to build relationships with diverse individuals. Another, uh, implement explicit lessons about racism and conflict resolution. Instead, make time for thorough and concrete lessons about overcoming racism and dealing with cultural misunderstanding or mistreatment and classes. The best way is, of course, be realistic. Let them be immersed or involved with some scenario. All right, teach about social justice. 
this is really important. I think this is the last part. Teach about the work of key organizations and movements that work to promote tolerance and understanding around the world. Discuss career options that involve this kind of work. Engage the kids or the learners in school-wide and community social justice works. All right, remember, always remember to fight racism. And remember that racism has no part in our classrooms, especially for our learners. And with that, my dear viewers and participants, thank you. Let me end my presentation with a simple quote. Here it goes. Teachers must match the diversity of their classrooms with their own diversity of methods and materials they use to engage and teach the students. All right. So that's it, my dear viewers and participants. Thank you so much. Thank you, IGT. Thank you so much, sir, for a rich content presentation, which can impact our knowledge seeker surely. After your presentation, I hope our knowledge seeker can learn something new, which was our only intention. Learn and go together, IGP knowledge seeker, once again. Thank you so much, sir, for your presentation. Now, sir, it's time for our question answer session, which is the one more valuable part of our regular web. Honorable sir, please stay with us. After a short video, we will back in our session part two, which is the question answer part. Dear IGP knowledge seeker, please ask your question in the comment box as much as you want to know from our speaker. Thank you. After question answer, we have a webinar certification and online quiz competition. Dear IGP knowledge seeker, please ask your question in the comment box as much as you want to know from our speaker. Thank you. After question answer, we have a webinar certification and online quiz competition. Sir, I think after a wonderful presentation, our participant can understand the topic very clearly. There are no questions from our participants. So once again, thank you so much, sir, for your time in IGP. We have learned a lot from you with new topic. It will add some value to our day-to-day -day activity along with our academic and professional growth. Honorable sir, hope to see you again with a new topic and a new date. Thank you, sir. Take care. Thank you so much, IGP. Thank you, viewers. And remember, teach with diversity. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Welcome, sir, honorable sir. Before I move to the next, if you want to leave this studio, you can. I will, I will now leave. Thank you so much. Goodbye, everyone, and see you soon to our next webinar. Thank you, IGP. Thank you. Welcome, sir. Dear IGP, now let's take time for the webinar certification. This is the most attractive and powerful part of a regular webinar. After a short video, we will start our webinar certification. After webinar certification, we have an online quiz competition and quiz certification. They are IGP knowledge. It's time for the webinar certification process, the most attractive and powerful part of our regular web. After a short video, we will start our webinar certification. After webinar certification, we have an online quiz competition and quiz certification.
ipradp.com please make sure your presence on our website find the running session and get and all after watching learning part 1 move to the next to the learning test passing mark 80 percent if pass back to the course again to download your certificate if you will reject the quiz download your certificate in pdf or jpg for your attention i am going to share the procedure again Visit www.edioigp.com and sign up or sign in. Without this, you cannot join Life Quiz competition anymore. Browse the Life Quiz button or give a link. Find the session name and join with your log website or user account. Click join and wait for a few minutes for others to join. Enjoy an online Life Quiz competition. After the quiz, you will issue a certificate for top 10 as previously. Dear IGP knowledge check, it's time for the webinar set. It's time for the online quiz competition or most engaging part of this webinar. We have changed a few process for online quiz competition. Note that after life, no one can participate. Now, time for the online quiz competition. To join the online quiz competition properly, please follow my instruction carefully. Now, time for the online quiz competition. To join the online quiz competition properly, please follow my instruction carefully. Visit www.edioigp.com and sign up or sign in. Without this, you cannot join the quiz competition anymore. Browse the live quiz button or give a link. Find the session name and join with your logged website or user account. Click join and wait for a few minutes for others to join and join online live quiz competition. After the quiz, we will issue a certificate for top 10 as previously, which you can find on official Facebook page and group instead of global professional. After a short video, we will start our quiz session. <laughs> Is it true or false? Option one is the right answer. 100% people are right here. Our second question is the Buddhist teachers to compassion and tolerance is based on option one, disrespect for the dignity of all life, option two, absolute respect for the dignity of life. Option 2 is the right answer, 100% people are right here. Third question is, by teaching tolerance and centering our common humanity, we can, is it option 1 or option 2? Option 2 is the right answer. 77% people are right here. Next question is Teaching about religion can increase tolerance and create understanding between desert students. Is it true or false? Option 1 is the right answer. 95% people are right here. Next question is, is the purpose of the teaching tolerance project to offer teaching method and material to assist with racist teaching? Is it true or false? Our next question is fires hate and bio try and keeps a hate was history publishes teaching tolerance is it option one or option two
Option two is the right answer. Fifty nine percent people are right. Our next question is teaching universal ethic values as a fairness, caring, honesty, realization, tolerance, and respect. Is it option one or option two? Option one is the right answer. Eighty-three percent people are right here. Our eighth question is: School administrator and staff are responsible for preaching tolerance at their school sites. Is it true or false? Option one is the right answer. Ninety-one percent people are right here. Second last question of the session is: PT teaching the man may help improve your activity tolerance and quality of life. Is it option one or option two? Option two is the right answer. Forty-eight percent people are right here. Last and final question of the session is. Pride Month is about teaching tolerance, education, is pride history, and counting to move forward in what is it true or false? Option one is the right answer. Hundred percent people are right here. Congratulations to our online quiz foundation winner. Top ten congratulations again. We will take a few minutes for finalizing the result. After that, we will issue our online quiz foundation certificate on official Facebook page and group Institute of Global Professional. Congratulations to our online quiz foundation winner. Top ten congratulations again. We will take a few minutes for finalizing the result. After that, we will issue our online quiz foundation certificate on official Facebook page and group Institute of Global Professional. Congratulations to our online quiz foundation winner. Top ten. Congratulations again. We will take a few minutes for finalizing the result. After that, we will issue our online quiz foundation certificate on official Facebook page and group Institute of Global Profession. At the end of our session, we can say properly PD risk and never stop learning, cause life never stop teaching us. Be happy, stay safe. See you again and again. We want your participation in every program. If you want to live a happy life, try to ignore the people of things all but understand the price. So hit the unlock button. Again, I want to thank all our GP knowledge seekers for their participation as always. See you again in the next session. Thank you.